it's our worship experience day and i know so many people probably know others don't know what uh what is the purpose of our worship experience uh what we are supposed to gain from it why do we have a worship experience and so that is why we came up with this uh discussion panel so that we can involve all of you so that when we go to that worship experience we are all aware of what we are supposed to get from it and uh, we hope that we will get the maximum output of it and uh, you know the spirit will be will be with us uh, and so uh, i'm welcoming all of you to this discussion and uh, of course we have our guests here that i'm going to be interviewing i am your host Maureen Gimboro. Uh so we will start with just doing a little bit of introduction uh, from our minister here to Johnny, then back here. Yeah. Praise God. Habari asahi. Yeah. So my name is Paul Loni. I'm saved. They love Christ as my Lord and Savior. I come from a nation called Burundi, <laughs> and I'm blessed to be here. Hello guys, God is good and all the time we are here to excavate what is worship by the grace of God. We don't know but we are trying and we want to make it look different. This is what is called corporate engagement and we bless the Lord because he's here with us. So I am grateful, I'm Murungi to be in this place. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, I'm John Derrick. And I'm from the nation of Kenya. <laughs> Happy to be here. Thanks for those who are following live. You're much welcome. Uh, hello, people. My, my name is Muni Bontis, and I'm so excited for this session. I'm ready to learn about worship and what worship is. So, thank you very much for our guests. Uh, the question of today is going to be why should we worship? And maybe before we start uh, by explaining why, uh, I just want to give our minister uh, a chance to explain to us what is worship. Okay. Worship. Worship first, it's a. Uh, Amen. Yeah, so worship is a service that did not start here on earth. It's a service that began in heaven. So earth is just, uh, it's just duplicating what usually happens in heaven. Praise God. So cause heaven, heaven there is no time. Heaven hakuna samoja, hakuna sambili, there is no time. Okay. So the time in heaven in Naitua Kairos. The time on earth in Naitua Kronos. Kronos. So, uh, if you did history, on a Kambia, like history, it's a, it's 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 an event. It's chronological events. When I say hey, happenings, kulingana na wakati, muda, when I say sifiwe. So who come There is no time. So it means uh, what the Bible says that day and night, kila wakati. Angels wana inama wakinuka wana inama wakinuka. So na manisha hawana wakati ambapo wana stop. Praise the name of Jesus. They continually in worship. They are always in worship. So that is what what usually happens in heaven. So remember that the heavens were created first before the earth. The Bible says that uh, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth so before god created the the earth he finished with the heavens so worship was happening if before the earth was was created or formed so the reason of why we, we were created now is to duplicate what was happening on heaven in heaven so yeah so 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 then he made man man human being is a worshipping entity if you are not worshipping God then there, there must be something you are worshipping if you are not worshipping God there must be something 
you are worshiping because as a human being you cannot just be free saying that um, I don't worship God nor I do, do I worship Satan okay so so as, so as a human being that is what you have been created to do to worship so that's why God now placed us here on earth so that we may worship him so that we may duplicate the service that happens in heaven here on earth Wow, that's a very good explanation. Thank you very much, Minister. Uh, and so we're going to begin with our guest, Muni. I'm just, I just have a few questions uh, that I'm sure will guide this discussion. Uh, so, Muni, uh, I feel like most people uh, do not worship or, you know, um, what, what do, I, do I use? Uh, they, co they confuse morality, doing good, and you know worship so maybe can you try differentiate uh, morality doing good and worship itself um that's a good question I, I once had a question from a friend and he was asking me now that i i help the poor and i visit children home children's homes and i do not drink alcohol uh every time but I, but I drink once in a month. Will I go to heaven? Uh, we must understand this, that worship, it's not just singing. It's not how you see Muni Derek playing the instruments here and leading songs. No. Worship is a lifestyle. How you walk, how you talk, how you engage with people, and many sorts of, th sort of things. So uh, morality uh, can never be confused with worship. Let us be clear on this that morality is morality and worship is worship so if you are doing things uh, of the world that will remain here but if you're doing the things of the kingdom they're going to defend you in heaven thank you very much Moni. so uh, if you had that question I believe that he has answered it very well uh, and so we move to, to John Derrick uh, so I'd ask, how do you think that the act of worship contributes to personal growth and spiritual development? Wow, 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 wow. A very good question. Uh, oh. Actually, no, I'm good. Actually, uh -huh. how, how can this act of worship, or act of worship, contribute to the personal growth every individual uh, has something in him or her you have a gift you have uh, you have your heart and most of the times if we all are much soaked into what is called worship uh, as were explained earlier by the minister the guest minister we notice that I uh -huh, if we can give ourselves to worship to worship because everything begins in the spiritual realm the worship began in heaven so if your worship is very strong and worship comes with blessings because the person who, worship, who you are worshiping that is god the god you are worshiping can never fail can never fail so at the end of the day we cannot fail even here on earth so to the individuals who are worshipping, and I mean you and the one who is following, please know that there's a blessing that comes with it because there's a blessing in heaven already. Oh, that's very nice, Derek. Uh, and maybe before I move to the next person, there's somebody that will say, uh, I am going through mental problems or I have psychological problems, uh, and so I might not be able to worship well because, you know, I'm not in the right headspace. Uh, and so could you please uh, try to you know expound a little bit on the mental and maybe psychological uh, benefits that are associated with worship okay it's back to me again this is john aha uh -huh. the mental and psychological benefits do you know that there's peace that comes with worshiping god and peace that surpasses human understanding is what we are promised yeah. So if we are worshiping the person who is called the Prince of Peace, let's be sure that our mental health and our, and our psychological health is so perfect. Thank you. 
Wow, thank you very much, John Derry. Uh, I want to skip the minister so that I can, you know, uh, do him as the last person. So I'll go to you, John. Uh, so how do you think the concept of worship contributes to a sense of community and shared identity? Um, contribution to community and shared identity. I would say that worship comes from a point of relationship. You don't worship that which you do not relate to. We know that there are our forefathers, the patriarchs of faith, the likes of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Any time they would come to have an encounter with God, they would actually call a place a name, saying that I have had an encounter with God. So that encounter comes from a point of a relationship. So if I, I guess the mics are fearing this answer, no wonder they are misbehaving. Yeah. <laughs> That's by the way. Yeah. So I was saying, if it comes from a point of a relationship, then it has meaning and it has impact. We know very well that even those people who worship money, when you ask them, they say, I really love money. If they worship their children, when you ask them, they will say, I will really love my children. So it comes from a point of attachment. And now, because we are doing it from the Christian perspective, we are now able to know we are doing it from the relationship that we have with God through the person of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Wow, that is very powerful, John. Thank you very much. Uh, before I, I, I proceed to the minister, we are going to have a, a, live, uh, a live video going on. And I really hope for those that are watching us, because uh, we have our guest minister with us here. Uh, because we have our guest, oh, this is so much better. <laughs> we have our guest minister here with us. Uh, could you please send some of those questions and maybe as uh, the worship experience is going to continue, maybe after his sermon, he's going to be able to go through those questions and answer us and i believe that we are all going to you know uh benefit from this uh, and so to our very last uh guest uh, i have a question for you uh, in what ways does worship provide individual with sense of purpose and meaning with life because uh, we are told that we are all we all come from god and he created us for a purpose and all that so maybe explain that to us Amen. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, the Bible says in the book of John uh, that for my father is seeking for true worshippers that are going to worship me in truth and in the spirit. So when God is worshipped in truth and in the spirit just as it says that he dwells in the praises of his people. So every time you engage God in what does not concern you because worship has nothing to do with the human. has everything to do with God. Amen. So when you worship God, his presence has to come. So the presence of God means God himself. Is coming because he say that he dwells in the praises of his people. So when you worship, when you praise, when you just give him what he deserves, okay? Because worship, you as worship is giving God what he deserves. When I was feel it, so the presence comes. So when the presence of God come, or when God comes, he does not come to tell you sorry. Because if I tell you sorry, it's because I'm not able to tackle your situation. Yes. But when God comes, he comes to change situation. So that, that condition that you're going through, that through the, through the service of worship, through the service of worship, there is all those answers. There is all that thing that you're seeking for. And everything that you can just get in the presence of God is released. Yeah. Thank you very much. And maybe uh, as you, 
uh, one of this uh, discussion for us just explain you know help us understand how do we foster a deeper con uh, connection uh, through worship okay so uh, as I quoted this, uh, these scriptures in the book of John uh, the Bible says when that, that conversation began between Jesus and the Samaritan woman the Samaritan woman began a conversation and he and she told Jesus you Jews we have nothing in relationship with you we have nothing simply because Jesus was asking for a cup of water he said ah, even a cup of water I'm not supposed to give it to you okay we have nothing in connection the Jews and we Samaritans so their battles began way long and it came even to the time of Jesus but Jesus answered her and he said it's true even upon this mountain the, the woman said our forefathers our fathers worship on this mountain okay Jesus answered her and he told her it's true you worship but you don't know whom you worship we Jews we know who we worship okay so worship brings a person to, to a point of knowledge of whom you're worshiping as we'd say that you cannot worship a person that that you don't have a relationship with okay so you say you yes you worship the truth uh, the fact is you worship but you do not know whom you're worshiping but we know who we worship so worship will always take you to a place of revelation knowing who god is knowing who god is so it is more important yes it, it's good to be preached at it, it is good but it's more important when now you have a relationship with god that god can speak to you in a personal level you grow deeper more and you become strong more wow thank you very much i like how you put it that it's deeper than just uh, going to church and getting the word it's deeper it makes you get you know a deeper connection with god and now uh, with that uh, we are going to call this a wrap and we are going to get into the actual worship experience. Uh, just tune in, continue being with us. I know it's going to be a time where we're going to all be blessed and experience the power of the Lord. Uh, so let's head there. Thank you very much.